Hi guys, Dorothy here today, and we're here today with our Suddenly Autumn Altered File Folder Series. This is part three. Um, I'll put links to part one and part two in the description box below, as well as the Suddenly Autumn kit from Studio 28E that I'm using. I'll put a link to there. Um, so we started, and today we're going to be working on the inside pockets, um, matting those and the back pockets matting those and then we'll also be working on doing our front cover today which tomorrow we'll leave um, putting our journal together which is pretty simple um, cutting the holes in our spines and the ephemera that we'll do and some of that's really basic so it shouldn't take that long um, you know if we have to work into Friday then we'll do that too but let's get ahead with matting and doing the front cover so so far we have our inside pockets done so we need to get both these pockets and these two pockets covered so we'll get started um, this was just one of the ephemera pieces and that's simply gonna be the bottom we're just gonna glue that on there so that's simple I know I did get um, a comment yesterday that somebody couldn't hear me and um, that was probably my fault because I have a cold so I'm trying to make sure you can hear me so hopefully you know the volume will be okay today so you're just gonna sort of center that up and glue it down just make sure when you go to glue it down that you know your bows are facing up and not down because that's easy to do and then we have this to do. This was just the cutout piece and inked up. Then the this inside pocket here is five by five. So I'm gonna use this five by five square. And then what I do is I take it, I turn it over, and I make sure you can see me really well. I sort of line it up to where I want it to be. And then I'll just take my pencil mark on each side so I know where to trim it and then I just grab my scissors and just sort of do a triangle cut out just up to where I marked it and then that sort of eases some of the stress on the pocket then all you have to do is sort of Work it back and forth. And you, you know, sometimes you may have to cut a little more, cut a little less. That's the way it works. And you just work it till you get it done in there. Like that. Make sure it levels up. And then I just take my glue container, do a little glue down through there, down through the bottom. Just to make sure I get the top very well, really well. Because that's going to get the stress of. You know, the stuff sliding in and out. Or the stuff that's in the pocket, it's not really going to make a difference. Sort of glue it down, and then I can just flip it right back up. And that's just a way that I find it easier. Not everybody's going to do that. And of course, I'm going to put mine in there slightly crooked. Because, you know, we're on video, so that's the best way to do things when you're on video is do it all crooked, so it looks funny. And if you get it sort of a wrinkle, you can actually take your bone folder and smash it down and then even sort of slide it down through there and it sort of pushes some of that glue down in that pocket. So we've got our inside cover done. So we're going to go to the back. And on the back, we're going to do the inside piece first. And I've already got it pre-cut with my cutout that we did yesterday. So it's going to slide right down in there. And then I actually line mine up with the cutout. I sort of like like it to have that. And I did use the tear roller on this, so it's a little uneven on the one side. That's just... I think it sort of adds to it. I know some people worry about everything being even, and I'm just not that kind of person. I sort of like it having that more of a homemade look, you know. Although I don't think you should do it completely 
crazy. And if you remember me talking yesterday about how it can be hard to squeeze it down in the pockets with the glue on it. If you're a person that has, you know, if something's crooked, it completely drives you crazy. Um, you can work around that. You can mat the pockets before you glue them down. That way you can make sure everything's lined up a little better if you want everything completely even. I don't mind if mine's sort of a step down. And then I will show you a trick of what I do with a cutout if you don't have a punch. I mean, if you have a punch, then you don't have to worry about it. Um, I sort of line up where I want everything to be. So like this, I know about where I wanted this to be. Well, I think this is completely crooked. This is not my page. I think I grabbed the wrong one. I had two of them, and I think I grabbed. No, no. Well, let me cut one of those. So, this is three inches, so we're going to do it about two and a half. Uh... I just mark it in a couple of places and lay it down. To me, it's easier to do it that way. Because when you think you've got everything, I'm only going to make sure I'm over here. Make sure I was in frame. really fast. Okay, so now that we have a piece, okay, so I'm going to line it up about where I want it to be. And then this is a trick I've just learned. I push the lead in on my pencil, and then you literally can just basically like just like you're drawing a line around that circle where it goes in. I know that looks pretty crazy to everybody, probably. I don't know. Let me try to get out of the way so you can see if you can see that. But when I turn over, you can see where the indent is, and that tells you exactly where to cut without having to do a whole lot of drawing on this. And you know, if you try to flip it over backwards, then you gotta do it the opposite side because when you flip it over, it'll be cr uh, backwards if you don't. And then you can just sort of cut right around there. Then when you go to line it up, it's going to be spot on ready to go down. So then you just have to glue. Glue, and then we've got our front. So we've got our back done. We're going to do our decoration on the bottom. So I cut this out of the ephemera just because I sort of like the orangeness of it. So I'm going to put that in the center, but let me put my popper and my glue here. Pop my fabric tack. Okay. 
then so we're gonna put this down here but I found this really really cute a small piece of burlap so I'm gonna sort of put a little bit of burlap under there just sort of give it a little more of an autumn -y feel so I'm just gonna I hope just pull the strings out make it a little bit more raggedy and then this is actually a small bottle it has uh yeah the well anyway it's a very small tip and i can't think of what the word is but i'll think of it here in a minute um and it comes with a pen and you can buy these off of amazon i'll try to find the link and put it below I sort of want to put this where it falls out to the side, but you can put your glue in there and it's a precision tip, yes, this is what I'm looking for. So I sort of like it, I use it for Fabri-Tac and Art Glitter Glue just because it, you know, stretch, stretches it out a lot more compared to if you use the big bottle. So I'll put that right about there. And again, I'm not doing this with any preset. Yeah. I did the mock-up that I did earlier that I showed you, but we're actually doing this a little bit different. Same basic concept, just maybe different papers or, you know, and you're free to how you want, so. Put my little autumn tag here. Let me sort of center it up more. Okay. Then I wanted to do a little bit more than this when I was doing it. So one of the things was there was the circles with the walnuts in them. So I fussy cut, and for you know some of you newer ones may not know what fussy cutting is. It's just like where this is the circle. You just cut around the edges is where you get just the detail so you know that's fussy cutting you use that a lot in quilting you know different things and it's just sort of carried over into junk journaling when you fussy cut your image out so I'll put there then I can just sort of center that right under the autumn make sure that my, don't have my egg covered up and with the burlap but again, these come with stainless steel tips so they don't rust um, with the precision tips. So I always just make sure that I wipe the top off really good to make sure you know there's nothing there before I put my pen back in. And like I have one for um, my Fabri-Tac. I have one with art glitter glue in it that's a small, I mean I have my big bottle but then that gives me a small one. I have a small one with Mod Podge in it. You know, so if I'm working on a small detailed thing I need to put on there I can do it. I also have... Um, one that has uh, gesso in it, although I don't use it very often because I usually gesso with my brush. But I got those and they come in a four pack and I'll try to put a link, like I said, in the description box if I can find them. So, so there we've got our back and we've got our inside done. So all of our pages are done except our front. So I actually did sort of a mod podge of papers on the front. I knew that I wanted to accent the apples, so I used this and made sure that I wanted to just get the apples. So this is the, the tutorial. I have a tutorial for this that I actually made um, on the channel. I'll try to link it in the video for the tear ruler, because um, you know when you go to buy them you can pay 9 to $14 for them. I've seen more, some even more than that, but and you just tear along the edges. I don't want to tear it because I don't want to like mess up where the flowers at because I may want to use that for something else later on. And I'm just going to tear right along the apples. And of course I want to get the harvest time in so I'll make sure I get that. And it doesn't have to be, you can tear it however crooked you want it to be. And I'm going to come through here and tear this straight side off and I know I just have the edge on the front of my file folder so 
want to make sure I have just a small amount. And then today, I think, let's see how, yeah, I think I'm going to sort of lay this out and then we'll, we'll ink it up. Because inking it just always makes it look better. Just adds that sort of old vintage look to it. So, when you, if you guys would leave a comment, I'd appreciate it if you guys are enjoying the tutorial. You know, let me know if because I have several different altered file folder tutorials that I do. So, you know, if you're interested in you know seeing some of those, then let me know. Let's see. Um. And I have this. This is my teeny tiny scrap box, and I know it looks chaotic. Um, and it just has all kinds of different just scrap pieces that I've used. And we'll use that since it's got some red to go with the apples. Text, um, maybe a little bit of the brown paper. We've got music page on there, so we're good with I like some up there. Maybe that little postcard piece, red, it goes with it. A little tea bag. Um, a little bit of tech, the Mod Podge text page. Um, a little bit of grid paper that's got some red in it. Um, there's a little bit of a map. Um, let's see what we have in here. I'm not going to use. There's some coffee dyed paper. We can use it. There's some red stripe. Um, there's a red ticket. We might use that. Um, since we're doing harvest, maybe a little piece of gold foil. A little more green in it. How about a little bit of that green paper? So, again, this is just random with no presets. So I have this whole little pile here now that I can work with. So, let's see. Do this. Let's butt some red up against there. And then, like this little piece, I'll just throw back in my basket. I can use it for something else next time. I just sort of go out randomly. I don't sort of pull the ones that I think would match and look nice. And then I ink them up and throw them over here and then I'll situate them once I get them done. So I have a straight edge on that one. So maybe I'll put that one down in the corner. So it has a straight edge. Some of the text. And this has got some of the my green shimmer mist that I have a DIY for. that and again I'm just randomly tearing there is no when you're collaging a page you just really can't mess it up you're just collaging it so um this is some brown paper well I can't get the edges of that too although I'm not sure it'll no it'll show a little bit This brighter green paper, like a spring green. I'm gonna go around the edges, it'll sort of give it that almost like a gold accent. Straight edges. 
And again, this is just random. Um, I think we'll just leave that right like that. A little red ticket. How about we ink it up and sort of dull down the color a little bit so it's not quite as bright. Coffee dyed paper. Yeah, I really like the dark edge along there. sort of a darker background background picture. Make it long and skinny. And then like I said, you know, I've got my little basket I threw all those scraps into. Just the little bitty scraps that you know that a lot of times you'd throw away. I don't keep all of them. You know, there's certain ones that you know, but if they're just if I think it's something that stands out or something that has, you know, a significant look. Um, just do that as a square like that. And I know I've pulled way more many, way more papers than what I need to go around the edges on this, but I'm going to turn the bottom off the first one. Put it on a pad. Um, I know I can keep the extras, so it's no big deal. Um, this is just an old tea bag. Just gonna rip a piece of that off. So it has tea in it. And then I know I really like this postcard part here, so uh, leave that side straight. Okay, so there we go. Got all that inked up. Down and get a pile back over. So we have this nice little pile of randomness. So I know I want to put my ticket maybe hanging out of the top edge. Um, and then I just start gluing. <laughs> like what? You just glue it down, and I'm like, yep, that's what I do. I just Throw it down. So I know this is big and I have a lot of space to add on the edges, so I don't want this on the edge, so we'll just throw this here. Okay. And I know I want this red down in the corner. And that's what I start with. If I know there's something, you know, I want a certain way, then I'll just it on there like I know I want that and you don't have to worry about gluing it straight because again you're collaging and I want the postcard part this is off of a, a remnant off of a, Prima Tales of You and Me that's what that's from um let's bring this up here hair hanging off my shirt. I'm scared it's going to get in my glue. Okay. There we go. Put that there. So, let's put something brighter up there. Let's put this green across the top. And then we just overlap. Um, I'm not sure what's going to stick out where, so I just sort of layer it. And then this sort of sticks out the side, so I'll just sort of pull it off. And it's on the edge, so it won't hurt to 
it. Okay, let's put the coffee dyed paper here in the center. Randomly gluing it up. Um, let's put this right here. Let's put the green since we've got the glitter down the corner so we know some of it sticks out. And um, let's see, we'll just go this way. Just a peek of that striped threaded paper. So, same thing with the little map. We'll just well, let's pull this up here, drop this down, and put it right over top of that. And if you need to, you know, that's one thing with the little precision tips. If you need to get in there to glue down, you just slide it back in there. We got this brown paper. Actually, I'm not going to use the whole paper. Let's sort of rip this off a little. Sort of like how the stripes the show through there. Make sure you get all the little edges down. We'll be going over this with some gesso, so the gesso will sort of reinforce. Um, so I know I want to put you some of this tea bag. So let's put this down. Let's put you right here. I'm not too worried about it sticking up because I know that my girl's gonna go over here. Um, oops, sorry about that. Anyways, I've got my camera off table, so at least it doesn't shake and make you dizzy. right here and that works and we got our little gold piece um yeah maybe i'll wait and stick that out no i think we won't use that and i think our little ticket here we might use um we might use it on our girl. So you know what? Let's bend this in half. And I've got a little thing of twine. And let's see. Hold on just a second. Grab my whole reinforcers. Let me grab my hole punch. Quarter inch punch into the top corner. Hook it and put my whole reinforcers around it. And I just buy the white ones and put one on front and back just to reinforce it because I didn't back, actually back this with anything. It's just a piece of 24 pound paper, is what I use. Um, I find that it prints really, really well for journaling pages. Okay. Then this is a 
Tim Holtz ideology tiny attacher. Oh, you know, I wonder if I can pull these back off. Maybe the other two. Let me pull these back off. I had a, well, I don't need to pull the back one off. I just used it to reinforce. So I'm going to actually put this here. So instead of having to staple that, I can just, and then you double it up, take it and fold it, and take the two ends, take the one from the back, and loop it over, and then when you pull that, put your little thing to the front, and I sort of like the sort of loose, and of course, I can go in here with my precision tip and pull this down. Of course, that would have been easier to do in the first place um, when I first punched it. But as you see, I changed my mind. I covered it up, and it worked out just perfect. So that does that. Okay, so I have my cheese cloth. Um, All right, oh, art glitter glue, you gotta put that lid on there because it just gets yucky if you don't. And then like, when I do my cheesecloth, it's actually several layers, so two layers. And then I just sort of lay it out and sort of, you know, put my tag or, you know, whatever I want to use on there, sort of the way I can along the edge and these are Tim Holtz scissors which I pretty much use them or well a lot of times if I'm cutting fabric or even my cheesecloth and stuff like that I'll use my fiskers because they're really sharp really good but I love the Tim Holtz Sonic Studios scissors they do great and I know they have carpal tunnel so I have hard, a lot of time hard trouble with some of the scissors and these don't, they're plastic, so you don't have that pressure continuing on your hand. It makes a big difference sometimes. Okay, so then I have to decide where I want to put. So I just wind my cheesecloth up, knowing that I can come back. So I'm just going to take my Fabri-Tac. I find it does really good, especially if you're using like any kind of lace or like the cheesecloth or whatever. And then I'm just going to lay this down. And I know I want the postcard to stick out over here. I don't mind if my cheesecloth is sticking over it because I can trim it up once we get done. I sort of like that corner with nothing under it. And if you put your fabric tack on and you can glue it down your cheesecloth will stick to because it'll stick to the paper through the cheesecloth I always take my bone folder and smash it down with the cheesecloth I don't know everybody does everything different but that's just the way I do it so that edge out, but see where the postcard sticks out. I like that. Um, I'm going to trim this down a little bit up here. It's sort of long. I don't want it to overtake where you can't see anything. I'm going to sort of trim up. Mm, let's trim this corner up a little bit just so it's not so blocky. You can see the apples. You can see the harvest time. I think I really like that. So you can see where, you know, we took from all that collage paper and you put that on top, it just really draws out. Now, 
I need to get a brush really fast. This is the brush I use when I'm done using my gesso. And I bought this uh, Walmart, I think, $9. It's a really big bottle and it, you know, stays around for quite a bit. And you just need a little bit of teeny tiny bit. And I won't even use probably that much. But. So, was. Dab my brush a little bit and then I just sort of dab it out because I don't want it full strength. I just want a little bit on there. I don't want to. So then I'll go in and sort of lighten some of this up so it's not as dark. You let some of it bleed through. Like, and I just tap it off. It just sort of takes away some of the harshness. You know, like the way the postcard sticks out. And I'm going to add a little bit of dark down here in the very corner just to add. And you just move the cheesecloth out of the way and I just sort of like it just sort of dulls it down some, the background, so the focus is more so on the girl. And, you know, you can keep hitting it and it'll lighten it up. I sort of like the apples. Lighten them down a little bit, but not much because turn them bright. A little bit of a green up here, I think. It's a little dark. And again, you know, you didn't have to use. Just so you could keep it just the way it is. I think I'm actually gonna go with this but just a tad bit. Just to... It just creates more of a background, and you could even go, you know, a little bit over, you know, the edges if you want to sort of block, create. If you go around lighter around the edges, you sort of create like a frame. And when you do that, it automatically draws your eye into the center of, you know, whatever the image is. And you don't really, it's sort of a trick. So a lot of times you'll see artists will, you know, create that frame. Sort of lighten it up or darken it even. It sort of adds. And you don't realize it until you look at it and you stand back and you're like, whoa, it makes such a big difference. So. There we go, and you'll see I didn't even use all of that, so I have another little container I put that in to save it for later. And just so we'll watch, it's water soluble, so you can wash it straight out in water. So there is our darling cover with our little girl, and you can see. So again, this is the Suddenly Autumn kit from Studio 28E. This is the altered file folder tutorial part three. 
um, part four will be coming tomorrow and we'll build, um, we'll embellish a little bit more within the kit and create our ephemera to go in our pockets. So we have our cover, we have our inside pockets ready to go. And don't forget, we've got our big pockets back here too. And then we've got our covers, our pockets here. And again, like I said, if you'd like to see, you know, a different tutorial, I have a one that uses two folders. I have one that uses three folders. So, you know, I have a couple different ones that I do. If you'd like to see those, you know, please leave in the comments. Um, again, like, subscribe, comment, let me know that you enjoy it. Hit the bell if you want to be updated when a new, when the next one posts. Um, thanks for watching and happy crafting. Have a great day.